As designers and creatives, illustrators, you've probably used the pen tool a lot. You might look at a shape like this. You probably don't know where to start with the pen tool. Normally we will just start at the top or at the point of wherever we think. All we know is that we need to get those handles to move around in a certain way. Now the pen tool is made up of two things, anchor points and handles. The anchor point is where a node is and that's where you're going to place the object. The handle can be bent and stretched and manipulated independently or together of each other. Most of the time when we're creating paths in Adobe Illustrator or other design softwares, you'll probably do this because you don't care and that's fine, it looks okay. But there's actually a rule for using the pen tool and I can show you it without being on a computer. So I've got this letter here and you can see all the anchor points are horizontal and vertical and the anchor points are placed in very strange places that allow for this horizontal and vertical setup with the handles. But this is very confusing. Let's break it down to how Vector actually talks. Let's go for an ellipse. Okay, if I draw a circle here, where would you think that the anchor points would be? We kind of know, a anchor point would be up here, an anchor point would be up here or down here, anchor point would go here, there. Top, bottom, left and right. Now where would the handles go? In a similar way, they would follow the anchor point like this. And the handles always have these little circles on the end of them. Everyone knows how to do this because it's a circle. The system is called the clock method. Whenever you bring a guide down and it hits, and it's a perfectly horizontal guide, exactly where it hits, that's where an anchor point will go. What about the vertical one? We'll say it again. That's exactly where the anchor point will go. And we repeat. So for a circle, because most extreme parts of the curves are always at the top, bottom, left and right. This is known as extrema. The anchor points always go on the outside at the most extreme points to where a guide comes down. What about the handles? Well, if the anchor point guide and the clock method comes down like so, we just follow this guide here. So we know that these handles are gonna come out like that, perfectly horizontal. Same again for the verticals in any shape. But before we get into that, I wanna show you something that I've been working on for about six months with me and my team. It's our brand new fan dabby dozy website. It is not yet finished, we're about to get there. We're really excited. But this was all built inside a framer. And you can see if I scroll down, we've got lots of interactions here with all our things. This is all custom made. I basically went into a lot of templates, had a look at how they created it, and we created it. And this is the homepage, which is what I'll show you now, but this is gonna be filled with all of our new branding projects. Now the Framer are sponsoring this video to let you know that they are completely free to start creating websites on and you need no code. Let me show you. So here I can go to the template section because you don't have to actually make your own website at all, really. You can just customize it from a template that's either free or paid. This was all built inside of Framer with zero coding required. But the best thing about it is that you can actually build your own template or make your website into a template itself. Go ahead, click the link down below, show your support and try it for free, see what you create. So we know where the anchor point should be, but how do we know how far we pull the handles? If the handle of these two horizontal and vertical guides, if this handle comes further out and it intersects across the vertical one, so it kind of does this, we will end up with a shape that comes up outside. And that's because these handles should never cross between. They both share the same amount of pull. So that means that whenever I use the pen tool, all I have to do is use a guide. I have to bring it down and as soon as it hits, that's where I know an anchor point will be. And I know that I keep the handles horizontal and vertical, but I never come across each other. And if I do, that's a big no-no. 
But Will, I hear you say, what about the lines that aren't horizontal and vertical? What do you do then? Well, I hear you and I get a lot of people asking about this. These are called inflections. Now, when you're drawing the letter S, which is notoriously the hardest letter to vectorize and draw, you'll notice that you will most likely have to add these other points. And the reason why is because if you don't, you might lose control. And this whole system is about having more control. So what I do is sometimes when I could benefit from having an extra point and a handle, but I know it's not going to fit in this system of top, bottom, left, and right in the clock method, I will still just do it anyway. I will add the anchor point in. This just gives me more control and allows me to get that right shape exactly where I want it. Let's, let's go back. Now, one thing we can do with the ellipse is we can draw a square around it. And when we draw a square, it's easy to see that the handles follow the square, whether it's horizontal or vertical planes. And also exactly where that square touches the ellipse is where an anchor point or a node is. So if I go back to this other letter, you can see that I can just use the same process in my mind to create this letter with the pen tool. This is known as the box method. And this is what type designers use. All we have to make sure is that when a line intersects with the shape that you're wanting to trace, that's where a node goes. And that line is exactly the axis, whether it's horizontal or vertical, where the handle will go. And that's where you click and add the node and then you can pull out a handle on that vertical axis holding shift. Now, when it goes to the other side of the shape, we need to do the same, but on the opposite axis. But that's okay, because we can just bring in either a guide on your computer, or you can just know that that is an opposite side to the anchor point placement. So as soon as where the line intersects and hits the shape that you're wanting to trace, that's where the node goes and the handles follow the guide. We want a fair and balanced placement. So we can play around with the handles and see exactly where they should be. It'll take some getting used to, but the general premise is you'll be holding shift quite a lot. So remember to subscribe to the channel and the next time you're drawing in Adobe Illustrator, remember top, bottom, left and right method.